And the moon's a harsh mistress It's so hard to love her Julie Christensen is back with her new album, The Price We Pay for Love, made in collaboration with bassist Terry Lee Burns and featuring stunning takes on tunes by Joni Mitchell, Wendy Waldman, and Jimmy Webb. We find Julie at home in New Mexico, where she's happy to talk about the price she pays for love. I really l- like this record, and I it was a, a labor of love with an old friend of mine, Terry Burns, we um, we worked together 40 years ago in L.A. for quite a few years, uh, playing in swing bands and playing jazz. And we, uh, you know, carpooled a lot of hours of carpooling to like the Queen Mary and places right. in West L.A. for rich people where you have to enter through <laughs> the kitchen and eat bandwiches, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so... We have a lot in common. He's originally from here in Clovis, New Mexico, right. which is, I think, east and south of here. And uh, he actually recorded, his first recording was when he was 15 in that famous uh, recording studio that's in Clovis, the one- uh, where, where Buddy Holly did his stuff, huh? Buddy Holly, yeah. You know, and it's, I think it's a museum now, but- uh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> so that's where he's from. That's where he's from. Cool. And he's so an acoustic So why did you want to player. make this record with him? Well, he lives about an hour away from me in Rio Rancho, which is a little bit closer than Albuquerque. And it's a beautiful commute through this corridor um, that we have here, the Hamas Valley that runs along the Hamas River and all these red rocks and, and you know, mesas and cottonwoods. And it's, it's a beautiful, you know, commute. So I could listen to the music going back and forth. And we just did it in his studio. Uh, he... When before we moved down here, he he always sends me his records and I send him his. So wherever we've lived, uh, and part of the time it was twenty five years he lived in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, being the dean of a music school there. So we always corresponded, and uh, I looked at the return address on. I thought he was in Clovis taking care of his mom, which he which he was up until she passed. And uh, right. when we were looking at getting a place down here, I got a CD from him that was uh, postmarked from Rio Rancho. And I said, Terry, we're looking at moving, you know, an hour away from you. This is so exciting. So uh, we moved here in October of 2020. And in about December, I had this idea, well, what if we do a whole record of John Schofield songs, this this song, this album from 1996, I know all of the melodies and I can sing uh, some of the solos and stuff. I know I'm, you know, I've used, it's been on my changer so often and been in my car so often. I know this record. So maybe we should do a whole record of that kind of stuff. And like the next morning, he, he already had a, uh, ta- a you know, he took down, transcribed the, the music and uh, did a version of this Bossa Nova that's on that record. Uh-huh. You know, and I, you know, I thought, well, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, then I said, I was really thinking of doing this ballad first. So he he went with that and he said, oh, I have this version of um, Can't Find My Way Home. And right. of course, it was in his key. He was singing this kind of Leon Russell vocal to it. Yeah. So we yeah. started we started going at it, you know, just putting things down and we were just doing it just to have something to do really. Cause we we're old friends and, uh, uh, another f- old friend of 40 years, 40 plus years from Austin sent me a song. That's the most current single that we put out that gold bridge road. Wow. He sent me that song and I went, Oh my God, I really want to do that song. And I listened to Hegira one day and I said, right. <laughs> wow, Terry, you know, that's my story. And I never, it's sacrilegious to co- cover Joni Mitchell, but what the hell, you're a bass player, <laughs> you know? Yep. And so the first bass track on that was an electric bass. And I said, we don't need more electric bass on that thing. You yeah. play the acoustic bass like nobody's business. So let's do that, you know? Cool, yeah. So I see, yeah, you do, yeah, you do open the album with Hygiera, which is... Uh, 
you know, it's intimidating. I, I would imagine to uh, t to take on a Joni song. Uh, yeah. How, how did you think about it? How did you approach it? I'm traveling in some vehicle, sitting in some cafe. A defector from the petty wars that shall shock love away. Well, she comes from the Great Plains like I do. I come from Iowa. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I've always kind of warmed to her music and Neil Young's music, you know, later on Katie Lang. And, uh, you know, I and I, I really, you can hear the sound of the Great Plains and winter right. in those things, you know. There is a town in... North Ontario. <laughs> you should hear Leonard do that. <laughs> he imitates that. I would that. love to hear that. <laughs> oh my God, it was so funny. We went to the, um, well, I digress. But anyway, yeah, That's Joni right. Mitchell. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were at the Juno Awards and uh, Leonard's uh, acceptance speech that year was, oh, I love this country. First of all, uh, the people up for best male vocalist are me and Neil Young and I win <laughs> <laughs> yep. isn't that well, hilarious and so backstage he was <laughs> so backstage he was doing his little imitation of Neil Young there is a town in Ontario <laughs> That's and then he would go on with it <laughs> where dreams memories desire you know <laughs> It was so cute because Leonard has that really deep voice. Anyway, so, um, yeah, Hejira. I never knew that that was the song named Hejira because I always right. had like a cassette of it and just stuck it in. I didn't know that yep. was the lead off song to the record. And, of course, it never says Hejira in the song. Right. So, so you, you know, um, and I just was listening to that record one day and went, oh, my God. Have have I ever lived that story, you know? And right. it's a lot of verses and a lot of, <laughs> you know, but, and it's seven minutes long. And Terry said, are you sure you want to start the record with a seven minute song? And you saw probably that thing in my, in my, you know, spiel that I send out about yep, yep. Monty Hellman starting that long uh, starting uh, two lane blacktop with that long highway thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try and draw people in, and Hajira is kind of a long highway kind of vibe, you know. Just, just right. like uh, let's slow down, let's slow because this is a record of mostly ballads, and yeah. you know, let's just pipe down a little bit and settle in. <laughs> <laughs> That was a track called How He Lost Her, which you it looks like you co-wrote with Wendy Waldman. And the wind roars like angels And it sounds like her voice How he lost her He'll never know Yeah, you know what? I had a record deal you know, I, you know, after I went on tour with Leonard Cohen and, you know, I had just gotten sober, you know, like six months before I went out on tour with Leonard Cohen, because my last band, Divine Horseman, who maybe your most of your audience might be more interested in the Divine Horseman uh -huh. aspect of my right. checkered past, uh, you know, I, I had uh, extricated myself from that and thank Thank goodness uh, Chris followed along uh, with his, his uh, recovery about 10 years later. And we, you know, rebooted, you know, oddly enough. Mm -hmm. But during that time, it was really, I was, it, it, you know, it, I was really focused on trying to get my own career jump started and stuff. And I had this record that um, before I had the, the record uh, set up with the, uh, with Todd Rundgren producing, uh, my A&R person kind of sent me around the country to write songs with people. And one of the places was Bobby Z, 
pr who played percussion with Prince, we wrote a song together and I, I don't know how to find right. it. It's on cassette too. And right. uh, I wrote with Jules Shear. Nothing ever happened with that. I wrote with um, Barry Reynolds, who was uh, uh, Mar Marianne Faithful's uh, accompanist, guitar player. Yep, Barry Reynolds, yep, yep. Yeah, he's wonderful. And we came up with a couple good songs, one of which I used on an album several years ago, uh, ago uh, my 2012 album, Weeds Like Us, a song called No Sanctuary. But the other person, you know, I was kind of, waiting to hear what to do next in the run up to making this record. And my right. AR person called me and said, Wendy Wallman wants to write with you. And I went mad, Wendy mm -hmm. Wallman, mad, mad me, Wendy Wallman I said, yeah, she, <laughs> you know, she's into doing some writing with you. She's in Franklin outside of Nashville. She has a studio and I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. So they put me up in a hotel and I went to her house to meet with her and it was in Franklin and it was out in the country. And she showed me around the house and there was this little attic room. She goes, this is the itinerant musician's room. And I said, well, can <laughs> I stay here instead of the hotel? Can I? <laughs> so yep. we made, we did a couple songs. The other song is pretty good too. And uh, she was, rec she was like producing Matresa Berg at the time and some band of young guys and, you know, writing fishing in the dark for a uh, nitty gritty dirt band. And right. uh, we've, we've been friendly, you know, because of folk Alliance over the last few years. And she hasn't really weighed in on what she thinks of this. I don't know if she's had a chance to listen because the refugees are putting out an album and she's real busy with that. And, uh, yeah. you know, I did my due diligence and I copyrighted it and, you right. know, I asked her about her publisher and she said, well, I'll talk to him about that. And I knew she was too busy. So I contacted the publisher myself, but that song, uh, I found the cassette of it and, and, uh, Wendy had labeled it Howie lobster, like Howie, like the name <laughs> and lobster. Yep. And I went, Oh, I remember like this. Song. <laughs> and it was, and it was also very long because she and I were singing together on it. I wish you could hear her and I singing, you know, na, 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 you know, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, harmonizing with each other. And, you know, it was really cool, but it was too, right. it was a long ass song and I edited it down and <clears throat> worked on it. And she and I worked, I guess it was, uh, it was in the middle of this process. Like I must've been in LA for something else, like maybe March of last year when I was there to do a gig at McCabe's, uh, Dan Navarro asked, uh, Wendy Waldman and Janova Magnus and me to sing back up on his record. Ah. So I told Wendy, you know, we're doing this kind of Julie with strings record and I'm, uh, I've, I've laid down how he lost her, but I don't know if it'll have strings on it. She said, well, it better. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she, you know, she knows I'm doing it and she's, cozy with the idea but we'll i gotcha. it, the jury is out on what she thinks about it so but i see the like album it, right? yes absolutely okay <laughs> i see it closes out the album with a tune called hilltop which is written by terry burns so yes it's nice of you to squeeze one of his in there tell me is there anything that we need to know about that looking from the hilltop i know I'll see you then We'll laugh and talk and touch and live again Yeah, I, when I lived in Ojai, he had yeah, sent me that song many, many years. I mean, I was still in Ojai, so it had to be in the mid, mid or early aughts. You know, right? And he sent it to me. And he said, I, "You know, I think this is a really good song." He wrote the lyrics to it as well, and he recorded it several different ways. And he would send me like a video of him doing it with some fantastic players from Minneapolis. Many, a lot of people come through Minneapolis, so he would play with a lot of these jazz musicians that came through, and it was incredible. Right. 
So he had several versions of Hilltop and he recorded it several times. And he said this engineer, <laughs> this engineer in, uh, in Minneapolis, uh, confronted him one day after they finished a recording of Hilltop and said, can I cuss on this thing? Cause I'm just quoting something. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause the guy said, I don't want to record this motherfucker one more time. You've done it. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's handed up to here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't going to record you know it. Where he <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I didn't know that story, but I said, why don't we do Hilltop? You know, this is finally a chance that we could, am I clunking on the table too much? Is that nope. causing problem? Yep. All um, good. Cause I talk with my hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I said, why don't we do Hilltop? You know, I'm, you know, I'm writing lyrics to some of these songs and we're doing the Howie Lobster song and, we should do Hilltop. And uh, so we did. And it used to so have this did. long, both Hilltop and Away With Words had this long orchestral recitative beforehand. And it, I, it was Terry's decision to cut that off and have me come in more cold, you know, with stuff. That one and right. also a uh, remark you made. Because Terry loves, he, he gets up at four in the morning and loves putting these, they're MIDI strings. I'm not asking right. anybody to believe they're really strings. Right. You know, and uh, somebody, I don't know if you know Joe Woodard from Santa Barbara. He write, writes for Downbeat and other things. And and uh, he's a musician himself. I was in a band of his called Headless Household for many years. Okay. Uh, that was jet. We even did polka. We even did left of polka. Oh, there you go. Well, I'm, I'm from so Western glad. Pennsylvania. I understand. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm from Iowa. Of course. <laughs> it's hard, man. It's hard music to play. If, if, I don't know if you're a musician too, but have you played? So uh, uh, very briefly polka, and badly. <laughs> yeah. And playing polka is like, if you mix, miss the exit, you got to go you know, 20 miles to get turned around and go. Right, get around to where you, I, I can <laughs> see like, that. It's like, boy, you don't, you know, keep your eye on the beam. So, right. uh, <laughs> so, but Joe said, you know, I, I, I'd review this, but I'm uncomfortable with the strings, the, the way the strings are, because I'm a purist, you know, he's a jazz head and right. he's a purist. I said, you can, you can write anything you want about it, but I, I get you. And, uh, I told him, you know, one of my favorite things to play in the car when I'm traveling through this beautiful landscape is the soundtrack that uh, Nick Cave and Warren Ellis did to Blonde, uh, the movie Blonde. Right. Have you heard that? Yes. Uh, I mean, those guys are there's amazing. Only, there's only real strings on one track where it says such, such and such acoustic, and that's right. a little chamber group or something. But otherwise, you know. It's MIDI yep. strings, gang. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and it's music. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's still yeah. music, right? Now I'm getting the feeling just from talking to you that you. Pro I'm guessing that you maybe sing all around the house just when you're by yourself. Do you, nah, is that something you? <laughs> well, I'll no? sing to records. I'll sing to records or something like that. And I have this studio set up right here you know, with an interface uh -huh. or, and, and, you know, I've done a couple tracks for people in Nashville and for my friend Sergio. And I've, I've done a spoken word thing that Annie McHugh was doing. And I did a little video for Facebook that my friend from library girl had a, uh, you know, kind of a focus, a tribute, uh, to Aretha Franklin called Dr. Feel Good. And right. I said, well, who's doing Dr. Feel Good? She goes, nobody. I went, really? And you're calling the song? To the, the, no, I'm going to do it. So so actually, oh, Terry Terry laid down a bass track. and We had no chordal instrument. We had no piano, no little Wurlitzer like she does, right. which she played, actually, by the way, on yep. that track. Um, but we just had Terry and me because... We can do that. <laughs> We're both <laughs> musicians good. and we can make that happen. So maybe he had a little, you know, um, canned drum track, but just like kick drum and snare, you know, just like right, right. hardly anything. Yeah. 
And it was. So do you have a bunch of, uh, once the record is out, are you planning on touring or performing or what's, what's your. Well, you know, we spent so much time. We spent two and a half years working on the record and it won't, you know, we were having so much fun working on it and dialing everything in and stuff way more time than anybody should have any right to spend on making music, you know, but that we were doing it because we loved it. And I said, Terry, you know, I didn't know whether we were going to put it out for anything except a New Mexico Music Award and just keep it in our little, you know, uh, hula hoop here. Yep. But I, it started sounding so good. I said, I said, you know, I can't afford a publicist or a, a radio person this time, but maybe I can, you know, talk to the people that my my esteemed retired publicist, Carrie Baker, who we know and love, uh got me in touch with last time and I'll just bark up those trees. I'm not going to like reach out, you know, more than bite off more than I can chew in that regard. (laughs) Yep. Yep. And uh, I said, we got to set a date. Let's set a date and then we'll, you know, meet the deadline. So um, I don't know why I was going with that. Why you, I, I digressed from the question you asked me. That's all right. Well, I think I asked you what you were going to do on the day, which is April 14th. So, Oh, right. So I've been concentrating so much on finishing the music, you know, the mixing, dealing with the mastering, you know, dealing with the, yep. with Orchard and the people I have to deal with to get the record out. I'm just now starting to look into some gigs and in New Mexico, for better or for worse, a lot of the gigs are in kind of nonprofit spaces like a museum called right. Site Santa Fe and a, a nonprofit space called The Outpost and Gig Santa Fe that are kind of subsidized by, you know, uh, uh, fundraising and stuff. Uh, right. A place where Mary Gaucher just recently played this church in San Isidro and they book way out ahead. So what I'm trying to do is I have a bass player friend in plays acoustic bass in Nashville named Jimmy Sullivan. And he has, you know, kind of blocked out some dates and I've got a ticket to Nashville so I can see my brother in uh, old Hickory and uh, see a bunch of friends. And I contacted Jamie Rubin who has that East side bowl thing. I don't know if you know about that. He used to have the family wash. And he has a uh, small room in that venue. And I don't want to bug him too much. I'm waiting for him to give back to me. But he thinks that he'll have a space for us between the 18th and 25th of April. So we'll, you know, keep it close. That sounds just right. I, th- I think they might live stream it. 